Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. I'm continuing my series about international relations between the wars of GCSE history. This video shall be about Anschluss. In German, that means connection. It was the idea of uniting Austria and Germany. Um, as you may know, the, the Austrians speak German. They are almost the same ethnicity, culture, all the rest of it. The Holy Roman Empire existed previously, which is an Austrian-dominated uh, confederation of states in Central Europe, mostly German-speaking. Um, so, the long and the short of it is, in March 1938, Austria became part of Germany. Uh, Hitler was born in Branau am Inn, this uh, town in Austria. Uh, his book is Mein Kampf, published 1924. And in it, the, the opening sentence is, Today it seems to me providential uh, that Brano am Inn should have been chosen for my birthplace, for this little town lies in the border between the two German states. The two German states meant Austria and Germany. So it was just on the Austrian side of it. And to him it seemed preposterous that there was a border. It wasn't the border between two separate countries. It was the border across the middle of one country, as he perceived it. Um... So, uh, by 1938, uh, Germany had developed a cordial relationship with the fascist government in Italy, and he had good personal chemistry with Benito Amilcare Mussolini, the uh, Prime Minister of Italy. Um, so, uh, Hitler had also assured the uh, Italians that he had no designs on the South Tyrol. The South Tyrol is that German-speaking region in the extreme north of Italy, which the Italians had gained from Austria at the end of the First World War. Um, now, it may seem completely illogical. Uh, Nazism is hypernationalism, is pan Germanism, trying to unite all ethnic Germans in one greater Germany. Um, so here Hitler was abandoning one of his own core principles. But as Hitler said, in politics there's no room for sentimentality, only cold bloodedness. Well, it's one of the few times that Hitler really believed what he said. Um, the Austrian Chancellor back then was Kurt von Schuschnigg, and he wanted to hold a plebiscite that is a vote uh, on one question. Should Austria join Germany or not? The Chancellor did not want this to happen. Um, so uh, the government was only going to allow people over the age of 24 to vote. This was because Nazism was very popular amongst the young. Um, it's hard to believe now, but it was fashionable. It was a new and exciting, radical idea. It seemed to be highly successful. Unemployment had largely disappeared in Germany. There were these rallies and so on. Yes, there was brutality as well. By 1938, the Nazis in Germany had already killed several hundred people uh, in Germany, um, but the uh, obviously completely compliant German press only extolled the successes of, of Nazism. Um, anyway, um, Hitler was worried that the vote to unite with Germany would not be by a large majority. Even if it had been held on a completely fair basis, it's likely that the, the vote would have been for unity with Germany. But um, tyrants do not want to win by 51%. They want to win by 101%. So Hitler warned the Austrian government not to hold this. If you do, it's war. And uh, the Austrian government was aware that more than a few of their soldiers wouldn't fight for an independent Austria, quite like the idea of uniting with Germany. So um, Schusnig caved in to Hitler's demands. Uh, Hitler said, you will allow my army in and we will supervise the plebiscite. So the uh, German army entered Austria not a shot fired, and Hitler drove in in an open-top car. You can see the footage on YouTube, and he was greeted rapturously. The, the crowd were absolutely ecstatic, and from this unscientific uh, measure, you can see that he was genuinely popular. It's very unfashionable to say that, but, you know, in Austria, a lot of people genuinely admired him. As I say, the horrific side of Nazism wasn't so apparent. Most of that came later. Um, so whether you're a Nazi or an anti-Nazi, Austria uniting with Germany is not a, a, a horrific idea. If they're two countries and they want to join together, shouldn't that be allowed? That's not harming anybody else. Yes, the Nazis were uh, brutal and they wanted to persecute Jewish people and all sorts, right? But that's not essential to Austria and Germany uniting. It could be done on a democratic basis. It could lead to a humane government. We know in this case it didn't. Um, anyway, so the plebiscite was held under Nazi supervision. Uh, known opponents of Anschluss were rounded up and imprisoned. Uh, they sent to concentration camps. Um, and one of the uh, railway station platforms in uh, Vienna, you can see a memorial to those um, independence campaigners who were whisked away to concentration camps, many of them never to return. So the result was declared as 99% Ja.
to joining. Um, so some historians say that those who voted really did vote in 99%, yes, but that's because um, people weren't allowed to campaign for no, and it was dangerous, you couldn't trust the secret ballot there, so people who didn't want to unite with Germany just didn't risk it and didn't vote. Um, so that was that. Karl Rehner, former president of Austria, a socialist, he too advocated for um, advocated for joining Germany. Austria was renamed Ostmark. Um, so some the Nazi Party had been illegal in Nazi till in, in Austria till a year before, and some police officers who'd been too zealous in arresting Nazis were executed without trial immediately after Anschluss. Um, so that's enough on that one.